we did yesterday, but I think a lot of us really feel like the kickoff of this conference is always Marshall's welcoming address. So Marshall Saunders, could you please join me up here? So the first thing here on my list is hello and, and welcome. And um, I thank God that you are here, every, every one of you. I'm so deeply appreciative that you're here. I'm talking about the person in your chair. Thank you for being here. You are a dream come true. <laughs> you are a dream come true. Well, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about uh, my early days of becoming a citizen's lobbyist. Not a citizen's climate lobbyist, but I started out in hunger and poverty with my Dear friend Sam Daly Harris. Is Sam around? Sam? Oh, Sam. Sam, Sam started uh, results in a phone booth at the middle school in Miami. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I uh, deeply admire uh, Sam. Well, um, I'm going to. Uh, uh, I, I began uh, as a citizen lobbyist at Results, and we lobbied for hunger and poverty issues. Um, that was about 21 years ago. And so I'm going to tell you two little stories that occurred about then, my beginnings of citizen uh, lobbying. Just a couple of words about citizens climate lobbying, my very earliest thoughts about it. And then who we are, I'm going to be so bold as to say who you and I are. <laughs> and then uh, a quote, and I'll close with a quote. So um, back in 1990, can everybody hear me well? Is it, is it clear? Am I speaking loud enough and everything? OK, good. Yeah. Uh, back in about 1994, uh, I was just a new results partner, and the group leader called and said we had a meeting with uh, the member of Congress. And so we walked into the member's office. There were six or seven uh, results uh, partners there. And uh, they ushered us into the meeting room. And there were these very impressive, luxurious chairs. This is my first time ever meeting with a member of Congress. I've seen one in the parade at one time. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we sat down on these very uh, luxurious chairs, and promptly in comes the member of Congress, first one I had ever, ever met. We all said hello and uh, sat down. He was dressed in a dark blue suit and a conservative tie. And I, I, uh, and I was seated straight across from him. There was no table in between to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked, I could see his shoes, and then uh, his shoes, I could count the overhead light and, and the reflection in his <laughs> shoes. And so I was, I was nervous. I was nervous. Um, as the meeting began, uh, and the results partners began to talk, uh, the only thing I could think about were uh, my legs. Where should they be? <laughs> <laughs> they were, uh, I noticed that, that my legs were crossed at the ankles, and I thought, no, that kind of looks good. I should. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I crossed them at the knees, and I thought, no, that looks laid back. <laughs> I can't do that, so I'm squirming around, and I don't know if he's looking at me or not. Meanwhile, the meeting is going on. <laughs> I have no idea what's being said. <laughs> then there was a problem with my hands and arms. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do with them. And I had them folded in my lap, and I thought, no, that's school play. I shouldn't do that. So I put on, I thought, put them on, yeah, right, on the arms of the chair. Uh, and the results partners were talking about different things, but I, again, I didn't know what they were talking about. I didn't listen. And then I did notice that the lady next to me, I think it was Anne Marie Borbach, 
it was, she was beginning her talk, and uh, I thought, well, I've got just enough time to run my talk through my head one more time. And that's when I discovered that I didn't remember what my talk was about. <laughs> really, I mean, I was stunned. It was all blank. And I said, Lord, Lord, if you'll just give me the first two words, I'll, I'll, take, it, I'll take it from there. <laughs> but uh, the Lord uh, did not respond. <laughs> Say. The group leader, Bruce Underhill, uh, said, Marshall is going to talk about the micro credit bill in the house. I thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, just a, a word for a group leader. Thank you very much. I, I'll never forget. So, in the very beginning, when the idea of using the results uh, methodology to preserve the climate first occurred to me. I knew, that's one of those things you know, you know it's the right thing to do. And uh, it simply uh, had to be done. And uh, there was a question about whether or not I had the guts to stick out that far, risk myself that far. But I believe uh, it was put up or shut up. My wife helps me with that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe this is the most important work that humankind has ever been offered. And we are really honored by the opportunity to do this work. <laughs> I used to think that the important people were taking care of the important problems. Yeah. I don't think that anymore. Yeah. Uh, and so it's up to us little people. It's up to us little people mm -hmm. to preserve this climate and to preserve the civilization and this world. Now, there, um, I, I occasionally read an author's name, Ron Smotherman, he's a fellow Texan, and uh, I'm going to just tell you a couple of things that he said that have been very important to me, and I have kind of learned this as I have gone along the way. Who we are, who you and I are, is truly magnificent. So magnificent that it puts all that other stuff that we are normally proud of totally in the shade. Who we really are is someone who lit literally aches to make a contribution to life. Someone who really wants it to matter that they have lived. What you and I do and do not do counts. What you and I do not do has a profound effect upon the world. And life asks for our full expression. And what underlies our willingness to risk ourselves to be fully expressed is love, L-O-V-E. Hmm. And so, uh, remember to love each other, love ourselves, love each other, love those who would oppose us, and really love for all of life. Here's a quote, and I'll be, uh, I'll be done. 
This is from uh, George Bernard Shaw, Man and Superman, Act 3. This is the true joy in life. The being used for a purpose, recognized by yourself as a mighty one. The being a force of nature, instead of a feverish, selfish, little clod of ailments and grievances complaining that the world, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community. And as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, but the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It is, so, it is a sort of splendid torch, which I have got a hold of for the moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. Wow. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you.